In the next 15 minutes or so, I'd like to take you through a short course of how stress, both physical and psychological stress, affects our well being and our health. Um, and in a uh, following session, um, in a couple of weeks, I'll also tell you what we can do about it. So today I'll be covering what is wellness and how do we feel it. It's obviously become a catchword today in the lay media, um, but also in, in the healthcare profession. So what's the emerging science about feeling well? Um, and the third point listed here, the healing brain, harnessing the inner healing mechanisms to combat stress and increase resilience to optimize to wellness will be the topic of um, a future presentation. So there's different ways of defining wellness. Uh, I like the following one. Uh, wellness or optimal health is a state of complete physical, mental, spiritual, and social well-being. It is reflected in peak vit vitability, personal performance, and productivity. So obviously quite an ambitious definition um, and few people will, when they think about it, will say that they are in a state of wellness or optimal health at the moment. Let me illustrate this um, in a little bit more dramatic. You can see the, um, this depiction of uh, the population percentage that is in optimal health and that is in chronic disease. It is immediately apparent and only uh, about less than 5% of the general population meets these optimal health criteria that I just listed before. Um, and that a majority of people falls into this chronic disease um, category, 45% um, chronic non-infectious diseases like metabolic disease, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, um, chronic liver disease, degenerative brain diseases. And then there's an important spectrum where the majority of people find themselves in, and this is called suboptimal health um, and pre-disease. So these are individuals that don't feel that they anything is wrong with them um, unless somebody, you know, makes them pay attention to it or points it out, out to them. Um, but things are going on in their body um, that no longer um, are reflective of a, of a healthy uh, organism. And our current methodologies in medicine, the diagnostic tests, um, come in quite late. Um, so the clinical diagnostic threshold of a disease that somebody has, uh, you know, coronary artery disease or somebody has um, as cancer comes in once this process has already progressed um, to often an irreversible point. What is important if, so we label this state here, both the optimal health and the wellness in the first third of this um, graph, health uh, probably in the first half of this graph um, and disease in the second half of the graph. Um, and if you look at what's underlying this or what's driving this is a concept called allostatic load. So it's the, it's the chronic stress perturbation of systems in the body that normally maintain health and wellness. And we'll go through this in, in more detail. So do we feel when, when we're doing well? Um, is it when we're on vacation that we feel well, we forget everything else? Um, is it uh, after walking out in the gym? Um, or do some people feel well all the time? So the brain receives a continuous flow of information about the state of the body. So the brain actually knows on what part of that curve that I showed you before um, we're operating. It won't ring the alarm bells um, until something critically goes wrong or until you have trained yourself to become more receptive to uh, warning signals. So the signals that the brain gets from every part of the body, here shown the musculoskeletal system, 
the metabolic system, all these tens of thousands of um, molecules that are broken down, generated by the liver, but also by the gut, the pulmonary, cardiovascular um, signals, and importantly, and this is obviously something that I've been um, focused on a lot in my own research and my own practice, uh, signals from the digestive system and as part of the, the gut-brain axis. So this information, uh, as I said, is registered by the brain. It's um, stored in certain uh, you know, data banks, um, but it does not necessarily ring the alarm bells that something is fundamentally wrong. Now, the brain integrates these inputs from the body or what we call the interoceptive input from the body um, with many other inputs. So with inputs from the environment, stressful um, experiences, positive experiences, emotions, memories of past experiences, bodily or uh, psychologically, and importantly, beliefs. So from all these multiple signals, and this is really like a supercomputer receiving massive input from, from the body and from the environment and from that of bases within the brain, uh, the brain generates a, a feeling, a conscious feeling. And if everything is in order and all these signals um, are consistent with health, uh, then this individual will feel well and will express this and um, will be, as we said earlier, high vitality, um, energy, productivity, and happiness. But obviously this state of balance um, that, that the brain always tries to defend, um, we're not always in that state because there's perturbations from the outside, um, psychological stresses and perturbations uh, from the inside. So from the outside, the perturbations come in the form of psychological stress. And from the inside, um, other factors as well, but I would like to focus on dietary stress basically coming from, a, from an unhealthy diet, an inflammatory diet, or from what's called the, the SAD, the standard American diet. And the brain responds to any of these perturbations, psychological or physical, uh, by aiming to maintain or reestablish optimal balance. And as long as it can do this through uh, release of signals back to the body, increased sympathetic outflow, increased cortisol release, the stress mediators, um, we're still in a, in a healthy state, but it's at increasing cost um, um, that this, this, this balance is being defended. Psychological stress, we should also not forget about um, these um, conscious sensations, or conscious feelings of pain, anger, fear, and uh, anxiety uh, that are an expression of these stressful uh, events. The brain has a very, or the body has a very uh, competent way of um, responding to these stressors. I mean, the reason that our species is, is well and is alive and well, uh, that we've survived major disasters that, um, you know, horrendous things that are happening to refugees and war situations that humans have always survived is because our defense systems, our stress response systems are very effective in keeping us uh, alive, often at the cost of wellness. So if you look at um, just a little bit deeper at the gut level, dietary stress. So another catchword is a healthy gut and a healthy diet. And on the other hand, a leaky gut um, in response to, in the context of a uh, unhealthy diet. What happens in, with a healthy diet, the, um, you could say that the gut is not stressed. Um, it is um, trillions of microbes are separated from the immune system. The immune system does not have to get engaged as a warning system or as a stress response system. Um, as opposed to with an unhealthy diet, we lose this mucus layer, the protection all of a sudden the microbes can interact with our gut immune stress system 
which results in a systemic immune activation, or what's also called metabolic endotoxemia. And this state of systemic uh, inflammation in combination with genetic risks is the cause of many of our chronic um, non-infectious uh, diseases, as I have explained in my last um, in my last presentation. So let's come back to um, the psychological stress. So we all know there's good stress. So acute, infrequent, brief episodes of stress or perturbations increase our performance um, because it requires increased emotional arousal. And on this performance curve, we see that uh, our performance increases to a certain point um, with increasing arousal. Um, but there's a point where this actually um, can turn in, into um, a negative state. So acute good stress, acute infrequent brief episodes of stress is something that our brain is uh, designed for and is very effective in translating this into performance. Now, bad stress is when we go beyond this, um, this maximal point of performance. We get into its chronic, severe, frequent stress, which activates the stress system beyond the point of optimal performance. The defense mechanisms now overload the, the, the system. Um, and several things happen, negative things for our health. Um, it can manifest as vital exhaustion, so the opposite from arousal. But it also has many other um, negative health consequences. So bad stress associated with dramatic changes in our internal chemical makeup, increase in stress hormones, a decrease of anti-stress mecha mechanisms, um, and importantly, an increase in systemic immune activation or inflammation, this metabolic endotoxemia that I showed you before, can also be, which can also be induced by an unhealthy diet. So you can imagine that the worst of all situations um, is really if we have the stressors from the psychological side and the stressors from the, the physiological side from our diet occur at the same time, which is the case in many people uh, living in our modern world. And then what happens um, in the context of chronic bad stress? So there's alterations in the body's metabolism with negative effects on many organ systems. There's structural and functional brain changes, um, and there is a chronic uh, non-infectious disease cascade uh, affecting pretty much every uh, organ in the body from, um, from our intestine to our brain to our liver to our cardiovascular system. And then the manifestations um, in, this, in this state of um, what's also called allostatic load is an increased frequency of obesity, metabolic syndrome, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, chronic pain and depression, and several other um, diseases, chronic diseases. So does everybody respond the same way to bad stress um, or to any stress? Well, the answer is no, as um, there's big uh, inter-individual um, variations in stress responsiveness. So what the brain perceives as stressful uh, in one person may not be perceived as stressful in another person. And there's many factors that influence this individual stress responsiveness. Um, so early life events, which play a big role in um, programming our stress system, um, sex and gender play a big role, expectations, um, based on memories and previous experiences, um, exercise um, in a positive way, is if it's moderate to regular exercise, and then you know chronic adult stress levels. So there's, there's many factors, and we've been studying this in, in patients and in healthy subjects that uh, fundamentally allow us to separate people into high stress responders and normal stress responders with consequences on on these downstream uh, negative consequences that I just outlined in the previous slides. 
So as an introduction or teaser for um, my next presentation in a couple of weeks, just want to show you what has been shown or is being demonstrated today, how we can achieve optimum health and wellness through science-informed wellness interventions. Um, so essentially, the goal is to expand this category um, um, of individuals in the optimal health category. We want to greatly decrease um, the, the percentage of people that are in this <clears throat> suboptimal and pre-disease state. Um, and we want to get away from a, our current, what, what's called, um, it's really a misnomer, healthcare system, which is in reality a disease care system, um, to um, a, a very small percentage of people that actually come down with these diseases, many of which uh, it's been estimated some 80% of our current non-infectious disease epidemic could be reduced or abolished by implementing uh, strategies to increase uh, optimal health and uh, wellness. So I'll, I'll leave it at this point and um, I hope this was informative for people that uh, are interested in their own, um, where they fit on this curve and um, and that hopefully people will be looking forward to our next lecture in a couple of weeks that will talk about what we can do and what is, is evidence-based and, and, and not just based on um, um, fat diets or fat psychological interventions. Thank you very much.